Beauty before me as I run. Beauty behind me as I run. Beauty below me as I run. Beauty above me as I run. Beauty beside me as I run. Beauty within me as I run. I see beauty all around. In beauty may we walk. In beauty may we see. In beauty may we all be. Now my mission is uh, to uh, bring attention to our not-for-profit organization, which is called Norawas de Raramuri, in, Tar- in Raramuri. In Spanish, it's Amigos de los Tarahumara, and in English, it's Friends of the Running People. And the idea behind that is to uh, uh, raise funds to help the Raramuri to help themselves to continue to run free through projects, sustainability projects, to, re- to remember and reinvigorate the running culture of the Tarahumara. And a lot of that is through sustainable agriculture. And a lot of that is through running, because they've been running for hundreds of years. And, uh, and we, you know, we want to encourage them to continue to run, because it's a beautiful thing. And a lot of people are forgetting how a lot of Americans have forgotten how, and a lot of us still remember, and a lot of us are working on re-remembering, re-realizing our genetic memories of long-distance running, because we all used to be very good runners, all of us. And some of us, many of us, have forgotten how. Most of the people here still remember, and that's really nice. And we're, we're, we're trying to encourage more people to keep, to still, to remember what it's like to remember what it's like to run and to run free. Before the race, I was contacted by the person that brought them up because he heard I was a pretty good runner. I'd won a couple of 50 milers. I ran Leadville five times, and and he was looking for pacers, somebody who knew the course, somebody who could gu- who could guide, who could uh, pace uh, some of his Ramory runners um, during the second part of the 100 miler to help him you know, place well and do well. So I volunteered to be a pacer. I um, went up to Leadville. I met the Raramuri runners in the little cabin where they were staying. And and it was uh, really a a busy race that year. There were lots of media, lots of people. The Raramuri had come up for the second time. And this time, the person who brought him up was paid a bunch of money to bring him up. And, And the sponsors of the race were a shoe company. And everybody, the media and everybody was just making a big deal out of it. And uh, the Raramuri were given uh, running shoes to wear during the course of the race. Part of the deal was for the Raramuri to wear these shoes as a photo op, part of the deal to to bring them up. Well, I introduced myself as Caballo Blanco and the guy who brought him up goes, oh, God, this guy is weird. <laughs> but the Ramry all really embraced that. And, and I made eye contact with one of these guys who had a big, sm- gr- big grin on his face. And I had an equally big grin on my face. And we just liked each other immediately. His name was Marta Miano. And we said, you. We both pointed at each other. I'm running with you. OK, if I run with you, yeah, vamos a correr. We're running, you know? So I picked this guy and I told uh, their promoter, I'm running with him and I'm going to run the whole 50 miles. We're allowed 50 miles for pacers. Most 100 milers, your pacer kicks in. And you have one for 50 to 60. You have one for 70. And you know most pacers run 10 or 15 mile distances. In this case, I, I wanted to run the whole 50 because I, wanted, I was a good runner. I was in good shape. I wanted to get a good run in. I knew with the Raramuri, I'd get a good run in, because they don't slow down. They tend to pick it up as time goes on. So we picked each other. And um, I was uh, talking, giving a talk to the Raramuri. Uh, the gringo promoter didn't much appreciate it, because he kind of uh, hoarded these people. He kind of uh, considered them his. <laughs> they're my Raramuri, is how he would put it. And, um, you know, there, none of us belong to anybody, but I was talking to these people and I said, you know, there's a special woman running this race. 
She's got real, she's got power. Como una bruja. Bruja, which the guy that brought him up says, oh God, because the Ramari believe in witchcraft and they believe in stuff like that. They believe in spacemen and Mar they've seen flying saucers. They believe in uh, brujas. And I said, um, this woman is your biggest competition. Her name was Anne Trayson. She was the greatest ultra run, female ultra runner in the world. She, she'd won many a race between men and women. She was on the top of her game, and she was just, I don't know how many of you people have heard of Anne Trayson, but she was really something. And I said, OK, so the strategy is, the plan is run La Bruja down like a deer. Don't pass La Bruja. And all these people are talking and they're chattering back and forth. And all I could understand from their language, which uh, the Raramri language is very unique and it, it's very tonal. And it sounds like a combination of Chinese, Martian, and a flock of birds. <laughs> and they were all, la bruja, la bruja. And it was like, all I could understand was La Bruja. And the director that brought him up said, what, who is this guy? What am I getting into? God, you know. And uh, so run La Bruja down like a deer. Well, the race began. Four o'clock in the morning starts the Leadville race. And the race began. And the Raramari, some of the Raramari went out pretty fast. And unlike the, the team that came up the year before, these guys went out fast because they wanted to win the race. And Trayson La Bruja went out fast as well because she was, she, she was, she's very serious. She's very much a competitor. And uh, during the course of the first 50 miles, most of La, Los Ramari uh, passed La Bruja. They made, they passed her. And La Bruja repassed them and cast a spell on them. And as a result, they never caught up to her again. Uh, uh, my man, Martimiano Cervantes, he passed La Bruja. She cast a spell on him. And sure enough, uh, later, in the, later on in the race, oh, my stomach, oh, oh. He, he, we had gas. Somebody gave him a Coca-Cola after 60 miles. And he downed this Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. And he downed it really fast. And next thing you knew, his belly was all bloated up. And, he attributed that to La Bruja, but it was the Coca. It was La Coca Cola. <laughs> so I picked up on uh, Marta Miano, and I talked him out of death, and I said, "Andale, Wavon, let's go." And Wavon means lazy. The literal translation is something else, but it means lazy. It's a way Mexicans say, "Hey, lazy one," you know, "lazy one." <laughs> so. Uh, Come on, and every time Martimiano would, would uh, falter, I would like, come on, on today, we have on, let's go. And so I brought him up over the mountains, and we were going up back over Hope Pass, which is at the 12,600 foot mark, and it's like a real turning point at about 55 miles, that second time over the pass. And, and I would reassure him that, hey, this is always the hardest part of the course, and you feel like crap now, but when you reach the top of the pass, the Mother Mountain will bless you. The Mother Mountain de Esperanza of hope will pass you and fill you with hope, and she'll make you light, and you'll fly the downhill. Well, sure enough, we got to the top, and Martimiano recovered, and we flew the downhill. Uh, uh, during the um, course of the run, uh, uh, at that time, uh, Anne Trace and La Bruja and the other Taramara, Juan Herrera, were well ahead of the pack. My man was in third place the whole time, but he was well behind the other guys. And after his stomach issues, he got, fell even further behind. And the, um, during the course of our long run together, when we got to about 85 miles, I asked Marta Miano, uh, okay, Kieritz, what do you want? What can I get you? Cerveza. <laughs> Give him a beer. He's come 85 miles. Give him a beer. He pounded the beer and ran harder the last 15 miles. And during that, the course of that time, uh, Juan Herrera, the Tarahamara, was in second place behind La Bruja. And um, every time La Bruja would stop for whatever reason, to tie her shoe, to take a leak, or for whatever, Juan would stop. 
And I read an account by Le Bruja later saying, it was eerie. Every time I stopped, he was shattering me. Every time I stopped, he would stop. It was as if to say he could pass me at any time, but he was very...